what you find there, Amy? <laughs> One man's trash is another man's treasure. What are you going to do with that? I think we'll just refurbish it a bit, tie it tighter, and then stack it for our cucumber credit. And how are we going to carry it to the land? <laughs> Put it above your head, see if you can hold it, like a kite. Like this, on your head as well? Yeah. Okay, let's see. And get some morning sun. Cold in the tropics. Yeah, apparently in July now it's the coldest month of the year, and we're living so high at the moment. So coming down that hill all the way here is fantastic. <laughs> Hi guys, and welcome back. I want to say week something, but we've taken two two and a half weeks off. So there's been a lot happening on the land since our last video. So I'm looking forward to taking you through that. What I'm sitting on now, we just got to the land and um, we saw this was delivered. This is a new addition to our workshop slash temporary house. So I'll talk a little bit more about that further in the video. Sure, so where to start? Um, the, roof. the roof. Okay, so the last time uh, in our last video, there was pretty much, uh, yeah, there was no roof on. So the roof arrived. How it was done is they assembled it off site. So when it came here, they needed pretty much two and a half days to assemble the structure, which went up very quickly. And then the roof shingle started. Uh, we've opted for a timber roof shingle, which was a wonderful natural option. A little bit more expensive, I must say. This wood is an extremely durable wood. It ages extremely well, ends up being like a, a light gray color once it's aged for a few years. And then with that, we were given the option of either finishing it off in a square look like this or in a triangle look like this which for us looks amazing it ends up looking like a bird's wing it feels like an art piece on its own so that's up giving the whole space a real feeling of an actual livable space so yeah that's one of been one of the biggest things that's happened over the last two and a half weeks and another very big visible addition is our water tower. So pretty much leveling up with the top of the house um, at six meters above the ground, or six and a half actually. It went up very, very quickly as well. Quality's been very good, um, way better than I thought. So hopefully in the next two weeks, uh, the tank will arrive and we'll be able to get our water flowing from our borehole all the way up and supplying our little house. So what's happening here? We've got our floor finished with a floor screed, but we've also added in a bit of more white cement um, just to lighten the space. And then the detail that they've done here, how they do it in, in Bali, is they put in a timber or metal. We've opted for timber. Um, it's sort of an expansion gap, which um, will prevent cracking, but at the same time gives an aesthetic appeal. So the new addition. What we've decided to do here, because there's an, this is a section that goes outside, we decided to put a new platform in the center over here, um, all the way to the edge, which gives us ample room to have our bed space, which also frees up the bottom section. So that's the wood that I spoke about earlier. So this idea of having this new platform wasn't, wasn't initially in the plan, and I think this is gonna be a, a well-needed addition. Something else to share is the paint finish that we decided to put on. We opted to go, I think there's a bucket somewhere here. It's called, I don't know, natural, but what it is, uh, here we say cat barley stone mill. So it comes from the ground. It's, it's like a clay slash sand mixture that they put together with some element of glue. Um, we're trying to go with as many natural elements as possible. So we're really glad that we were able to find that and the fact that it's quite traditional with regards to the Balinese. And um, they need to put one or two more coats on top of this. And yeah, we're extremely happy the way it's turned out. So a little surprise I had when I came to look at the finished product of the stone that surrounds the, the little workshop is I saw this hole and I was, thought maybe they've hit a pipe or something like that, but that's not the case. It's actually a ceremonial thing. So they dig this hole and then once the building is complete, then I would guess they take something from the palingi or the offering, or maybe they bring a new offering, and then they put it inside the hole, close it up, concrete it, and then finish it off. And that brings, I think, I believe, good luck and good energy to the building. 
So with us choosing to live in Bali, there have been quite a few things we've had to learn about the culture and the traditions, especially because we're living in quite a rural village where the tradition is very important to them and especially with us working closely with the local Balinese family. So they've been amazing at educating us on the various traditions, especially the important ones that we need to have on the land before moving on to the land. It's mainly for, for protection and security and to be able to live in harmony with the land and the spirits that are here. So with that being said, one of the first things we needed to do before we can even have real ceremonies here is to get something called the Palingi, which is like a small Balinese temple. We've ordered that, it just arrived this week, it still needs to be installed, but apparently it always goes on the furthest north section of the land. So we've decided to have it installed over here. It ties up perfectly, not only with our beautiful durian tree, but also with the neighbor's temple, which is perfect. And over here we're planning to do we're not sure yet, probably a sort of a water feature or a planted area uh, just to make the space really special. The wall is another one that's been coming for the last couple of weeks, jumping between finishing work here and the wall. Uh, but finally we are done. We've extended the wall on this side as well, also creating a nice little driveway over here and a place for a gate. It's turned out even better than we had hoped. And what we've done also, we've started doing plant beds on the front here, actually on both sides. So in the next couple of weeks, we'll be planting some local plants that are found abundantly all over. So hopefully we can find that quite easily and start planting this up to create a very, very nice front um, entrance for, for the property. Being able to walk everywhere on the land between the three different um, let's call it three different properties, it's very important to us. So this little part of the land, which actually goes all the way down to our main river, needed some access. It was got quite a bit of a, a slope. We got our timber steps, put in a few steps, and yeah, it's such an enjoyable little walk down now. We do have one little extension that's still needed, but otherwise, welcome to this side of the land. Getting a little bit disheartened this morning because my tomato plants that were doing so well don't seem to be doing so well anymore. We had a lot of unexpected rain and from what I, the little bit I know about tomatoes, I know they don't like too much water, especially on their leaves. So sadly the leaves seem to have these yellow spots on them and a few of the plants have already died. I think it's a bit of a fungus that they got after all the rain. But on the other hand, my cucumbers on this side seem to be doing really well. They're growing really fast, especially the ones that are getting a lot of sun. I'm not sure what we're going to do because the rainy season hasn't even arrived yet. So we're thinking about getting some sort of greenhouse going here or maybe even just the covering. Uh, it is on quite a slope. We're exploring a few ideas. If you guys have any sort of advice or thoughts on how to grow tomatoes in a tropical climate, please do feel free to share them with us. So with a little bit of rain that we've had over this dry season, our garden is really looking lush and growing amazingly well. And I don't know if you remember this papaya tree a couple of weeks ago. I was sitting next to it and look how much it's grown in just two and a half weeks. While our durians are, are growing slowly but surely, I'll give you a little snapshot of how they're looking. But we also noticed that our mangosteen trees are starting to fruit as well. I'm going to try and find one to show you. On this side over here, you can see there's lots growing. Not sure how long they're going to take, but we anticipate that in about two months' time we should have a lot of mangosteen fruits to eat. A few of the local neighbours enjoy coming onto the land to pick some of these ferns that they enjoy cooking with, some of the young ferns. At the moment we don't have any boundary walls, so we're more than happy for them to come and do their grocery shopping. Levi banyak, setala hujan. Masak, bengan ini. Enak. So we started with our boundary fence on the other side of the land. We wanted to keep with the way that the locals do things and so we have planted boundary plants. So I hope we got making up this bamboo fence with bamboo from the land and also getting off cuts of the boundary plants from some of the neighbours' properties too. Uh, it's actually our second time doing this. The first time the plants didn't make it at all because it was the start of the dry season. There has been a bit of rain so we thought it was a good time to try again. So holding thumbs they're going to last, at least we've got our, our fence up in the meantime.